Good afternoon, everyone. We're just going to give it a couple more minutes and we'll get started at about two minutes after 12. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Melissa Anderson. I'm from Outsource Solutions Group. I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar demonstrating Copilot for Microsoft 365. We're thrilled to have you join us today as we dive into the incredible features and capabilities of this powerful tool. Um, just a heads up that we are recording this demonstration as well. Um, our presenters for today's session are Joe and Elliot from Pax8. Pax8 is the Global Partner of the Year for Microsoft. Joe and Elliot bring us a wealth of knowledge and experience in leveraging AI to enhance productivity and streamline operations. And they're going to guide us through a demonstration of how Copilot for Microsoft 365 can transform the way we work, making our tasks more efficient and our workflows more seamless. Um, we're going to showcase various use cases and practical applications of Copilot for Microsoft 365, highlighting how it can help you and your team stay ahead in today's competitive landscape. Whether you're looking to just optimize performance, reduce friction, or simply boost your team's productivity, our goal is to provide you with some valuable insights and some actionable takeaways today. We understand that you might have some questions throughout the webinar, and uh, we encourage you to ask as many as possible. There's a Q and A. Um, you should see the Q and A button at the top of your across the top of your team's um, screen, and we'll also open it up for Q and A's um, at the end of the presentation. And we can provide any insights or answer any questions that you may have. Um, so, with that being said, let's uh, get ready to explore the future of work with Copilot for Microsoft 365. I'm going to turn it over now to Elliot. Thank you so much for the introduction, Melissa. So happy to be talking to you here today. Um, before we jump in the demo, I'm just going to ground us in a couple of quick things on these next couple of slides. Then I promise we're going to get into showing all the fun things that Copilot can do and how it can help your organization. So if we go ahead and, and, and move on here um, and get started, I think one thing that can really uh, get us started and grounded is understanding really the impact um, that happens when it comes with Copilot. So um, if we can go here, we can kind of see the scale of the technology revolutions and see AI at the very spirit, spirit tip of this. Um, I know for me, sometimes when I see the speed of some of these transitions, I get a little bit of an anxiety in my chest. And sometimes it just seems that I have to be living, uh, sleeping and breathing these different technologies to really keep up. But I think what that tells us is that being able to take advantage of this can really help our businesses continue to grow with our competitors or outpace our competitors. But a lot of times we really need those partners to help work with us to make sure that we are utilizing the tool safely and efficiently and in a manner that's going to give us that biggest impact as we see here. Um, then as we continue to move on, I think we need to start to understand how do we prepare for this moment? 
you know, how do we make sure that we're ready for this AI? I think it really starts with asking those questions internally of ourselves. Um, you know, what is going to be our path to AI for our organization? You know, what are the are our goals? Is it just bring productivity, bringing out through certain things and making sure that we're uh, eliminating mistakes when we're going through and creating different things? Um, it can be a lot of different things to different people, but really understanding what that is is important. And, you know, understand what are our current capabilities? Are we familiar with this tool? Have we worked with something like ChatGPT? or other solutions before that we, we think we can easily start to work with this tool and understand how to do these prompting, how to get the best results out of this. And then final is really, you know, do we have a data strategy in place? Do we have a strategy when it comes to security in place? So we know that we have the correct infrastructure and those resources to support what we're getting with this AI tool. Um, because we want to make sure that we're set up for success. Otherwise, we're not going to get the full benefit of value of what we're paying for as we work with, you know, Copilot for M365. Um, as we again continue on, um, I like to kind of talk about really these these three checklists that we're going to see here. And really what it is, is just the furtherance of that conversation we, we saw on the first page, right? Is how do we make sure our employees um, are empowered to use these tools? How do they understand that prompting? How do they understand how to do the interaction? The second one is, you know, kind of that standardization. That's understanding where is my data at, where, where we get the most information on that side. And finally, let's organize that sensitive data. So that really comes into that security piece, right? So I know that I have my data in SharePoint, I have my data in all these different sources. How can I make sure that data is cleanly? Make sure that we're not getting results that are gonna be sent to our tool that could cause issues with it. And make sure that, you know, if someone is either being a bad actor internally or externally, how to make sure that data is protected from any kind of leaks, both internally about seeing something that they shouldn't for our employees or externally getting to someone's organization uh, that it shouldn't be. Um, but again, we're, as we have those things in there, we're really um, here to understand what is this different ones, you know, so Microsoft has been building the foundation of this business privacy for decades. And, you know, think about how you've been interacting with these applications and how that's evolved over this time. So really this next evolution, how we're interacting with these tools is, is not uh, a revolution of those tools are, but revolution how we interact them with this AI assistance, which our own goal is to make sure you're having them efficient, efficiently as possible and getting the value that comes for those different tools. So again, I just want to keep this in your mind, how you as a business owner or as an employee within your organization can be a leader through this change. And like, again, keep understanding how can we best efficiently use this tool. But really what we're, we're here to, to talk about is in this next slide, um, and that's Copilot for M365. As you can see, all these are different applications that you're using every every day, but now you can be more creative in Word, more analytical in Excel, more expressive in PowerPoint, be more productive in Outlook and more collaborative in Teams. Again, just wanna ask you another question. Let's think, you know, think about three different ways, three different portions of your business or your company where this could, you know, matter and where this could find some more of these efficiencies inside of these different applications. And then um, just wanna bring us to this next slide as well. And you might've seen that there's actually a couple of different versions of Copilot out here. Um, one that you might already have access to today, because within your Microsoft browser, there's something that's also called Copilot. This was actually formerly called Bing Chat Enterprise. I don't know if Microsoft just didn't want anything to be associated with Bing anymore um, and change that over to Copilot, but this is just another way that you can actually go through and go through and do some web capabilities um, that's, again, probably free and available to you right now to be more familiar with how to interact with these tools, um, to be you know uh, more proactive and going out through that, which is just going to um, accelerate your adoption of Copilot from 365 and help enable that tool even more. And I think as we get some some information from Joe here and go through this, you're going to see how beneficial both of these tools go. But just don't think, you know, we're asking you to jump right into something to pay money for. We want to make sure you're feeling comfortable with that. And this is just a great way to do that with a co-pilot for like the, I like to call web. It isn't the incorrect name for it, but that's the way to delineate that from this co-pilot for the M365 apps we're going to be seeing here in a little bit. But finally, um, before we jump into the demo, just a couple teasers on this next page of what we're going to be seeing some of these workday efficiencies here with Copilot. We're going to talk about summarization. We're going to talk about drafting emails, learning new skills, and getting answers for some complex questions inside here. Well, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Joe so we can show this in action, but I will be monitoring the Q&A, hoping to answer any questions you guys have or bring them up to Joe so you can best see what you're hoping to see here on the demo today. So Joe, I'm going to pass off to you and please take it away. Right on. Thanks, Elliot. Go ahead and share out my screen here. So before we get started with the actual applications, one thing that 
I, uh, I I just wanted to showcase here is this just centralized uh, chat application within. Uh, obviously, I'm in, I'm within the the web browser right now, but you'll also have this in the uh, the bottom right hand corner of your screen here. Uh, this is hooked up to a different monitor, so that's not actually popping up here. But what you would see is essentially the same thing you're seeing inside of the, the the former Bing Chat Enterprise that Elliot mentioned earlier. And the the key differentiation with this is the grounding data that your prompts are being, uh, I guess, filtered through, whether that's through uh, the internet, in this case, Bing, you know, because we're living within the Microsoft space, or whether that's within your, your tenant or Microsoft graph. So this is taking a look at, I mean, you can, you can enter a prompt into this. I mean, I can, I can simply ask this, uh, what are the top five ways Copilot can increase efficiency in the SMB market, right? You're giving it a simple, simple prompt. And right now it's scouring the web and is going to generate a thoughtful response based off of that. Right now I could ask the exact same question, uh, under this work tab and it it'll do its best to answer it but instead of use, utilizing the internet to generate that response it's going to utilize uh internal locations such as like sharepoint onedrive um you know outlook if necessary uh when we get into drafting that's where uh you know, it's going to utilize Microsoft Graph to uh, take a look at your your chat history and uh, and email history to uh, start start drafting in uh, like your tone. It'll start picking up on your your inflections, your linguistic nuances, uh, and all that just to make the uh, you know make the drafts generated from Copilot sound a little bit more human or a little bit more personalized to you. So. And and Joe, let me just let me just help a little bit too on one thing too, just to provide some context when Joe is saying grounding. Just think about grounding as this AI tool's ability to connect to a verifiable source of information. Um, and why that grounding is important is because when they go through and do this grounding, that means they have facts that are supporting each of the comments they're making and the things they're creating for you. So that's why it's so important. And that's what the term grounding means. It's just that this AI tool is connecting to a verifiable source of information. So we're not having anything that's you know hallucinating or inventing any kind of content. So just wanted to, to clarify mm -hmm. anyone who wasn't familiar with that term there. No, thanks, Elliot. That's that that's uh, that's a great call out there. I mean, at the at the end of the day, uh, Copilot wants to be as helpful as possible. Um, I always suspected this going, uh, yeah, in in my initial kind of testing with Copilot, and I, I also kind of operate from the 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 stance of it costs nothing to be polite, but um, there there's actual uh, quantifiable evidence that uh, large language models are are more inclined to um, elaborate better or just help you uh more completely the uh the nicer you are to them uh which i which i thought was kind of funny anyways so we've explored what copilot can do on the web right let's explore what copilot can do within the tenant so Anybody with a Copilot license can access basically means office.com slash chat, right? And this is, you can kind of think of this as a centralized location to pull data from anywhere within the Microsoft environment. So what we can do here is, I mean, it, without necessarily getting too much into the finer details of prompting, um, because that I I will admit there's there's kind of a, a learned uh, a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to prompting. The best I can really st like state off the bat is just be as specific as you can, not only with what you want Copilot to do, uh, but also including in the prompt what you don't want included in the response, or or things of that nature. Um, 
but you can ask, actually generate a lot of uh, useful information off of a simple prompt, right? Uh, and if you're not sure, uh, Microsoft will have, I mean, they, they keep on hand just a handful of uh, suggested prompts uh, that you can actually go and filter by like use case, right? If you want to like catch up or learn about something or just ask a question or create content, right? You can even go and save some of these prompts, right? But one of the thing, things we can do here is just ask what's the latest from, and if you hit slash, you can insert either a user within your tenant, uh, you know, a file, a meeting, or or an email, right? So what's the latest from me? Because I'm the only one in this tenant. So we've uh, found a couple business proposals, uh, PowerPoint presentation, um, you know, various documents that I've created demonstrating this over my time working with Copilot, right? Um, and if you're not sure where to go with this, Microsoft will also add a handful of suggested prompts, uh, just you know, just to you know, kind of nudge you in the right direction if you if you don't have a a better prompt in mind right so maybe let's like i want to know more about this powerpoint presentation from june 27th so what we have is a powerpoint presentation on introducing copilot uh Presentation covers the key areas such as effortless content creation, automated workflows, uh, improved communication and collaboration, reduced learning curves. Right? You know, we can we can kind of drill into some of these things here. Um, maybe let's take a look at the proposal from the 29th or the the ninth. Excuse me. So again, this is just a, a business proposal within Word, right? Uh, summarizing the the you know the key points of you know automation, intelligent assistance, data analysis, integrations, customizations, right? Maybe let's ask it: Are there any integrations with Power BI? So based off of that, again, it's, you know, we're rather than referencing a specific document in here, we're just asking a simple question. It's generating a response. And it, and again, it's it's referencing like the actual like document or like presentation or again, whatever data is living with your tenant uh, to, to, th to then go and verify uh, that the the information is 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 therefore correct. Right. So this is this is all great for searching data within your tenant um i mean one one thing with that going into a copilot deployment deployment you're going to want to make sure that you have a solid information protection strategy or uh like a, at least a good foundational knowledge of uh like role-based access control and all that, uh, just to uh, uh, you know, address the the security concerns around what Copilot can actually view. Unfortunately, there's not a uh, just overarching dashboard of what Copilot actually actually has access to. Um, I mean, that takes the the form of your your M365 tenant, right? Um, 
basically copilot can see everything that the user with the license has permission to see so just bear that in mind before deploying it anyways let's take this what we can do is copy this and then go and open up something like word right and we'll just open up a blank document and we can ask it to draft a business proposal on the following, please. And now we've, I've just copied the response from this, but you can also, uh, again, hit like backslash and reference a specific document or presentation, right? Or you can uh, basically like attach a file here within that. So it's going to think about it. And there we go. I mean, well, uh, it's still thinking about it. This was admittedly a, a much more substantial prompt than I than I anticipated it to be. But look at what we've done here within the course of what, maybe five minutes, if you if you omit my rambling. Uh we've we've taken some we we've asked a simple question, we've garnered some information, and then we've turned that into net new content. Now again. This isn't necessarily a regurgitation machine. Like there, there's always these points along the way where you have an opportunity for for human intervention. Uh, you know, just I mean, one, just read over what it's actually spitting back at you to make sure that one, like the information is true, right? That's why it, it, it sends out those, those reference materials just so you can ascertain whether or not it's uh, uh, hallucinating or not. Cause at, at the end of the day, it's just trying to help you to the best of its ability. Um, you can go through and make whatever edits you need, uh, but you can also use Copilot to uh, rewrite sections for you so let's say let me go ahead maybe i think that this un introduction is a little bit too wordy right can you rewrite the highlighted section to make the content more concise So now it's gone ahead and rewritten this. And let's see, can you replace the highlighted section with the rewritten content, please? Uh, it doesn't want to seem to do that. But that's okay. We can just copy, right? And 
paste. Well, paste. Right. The other thing we can have it do is critique or analyze your language in here. So if I wanted to just take a look at the, the features and benefits of Copilot, right? I can ask it to critique my language on the highlighted section. I can't type today, please. So in this case, it's gone and given me a few uh, pointers, right? I mean, it, it's complemented my, or I guess it's complemented its clarity, like clarity, redundance, or redundancy, wordiness, flow, and engagement, uh, and has given me some uh, revisions, right, to consider putting in there. So it's it's not only a capable drafting tool, but you can also have it kind of look over your shoulder a little bit, give you advice, right? Again, the 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 key point here is you're not starting from scratch and you're not doing this on your own. Now, we can continue tweaking this uh, as, as much as we want, but what we can do here, let's go ahead and uh, we'll save this document. All right. Um, that should be already saved. All right, let's come over to PowerPoint. And we can create a presentation from the file. Document. 11. That's it. Here, let's, let's just reload this real quick. Here at OSG, we like to call that a welcome to the cloud moment. <laughs> when things aren't quite syncing up as quickly as you need to, it has to go up to that cloud. Here we go. If this doesn't work, I've got 10 other documents I can create a presentation from, but Okay. Uh, so this is cool. It's actually, it's given me an outline of this, which I, I haven't actually seen this before. Um, but with that, it's generating slides. It's generating artwork. Uh, and we can go in here and... I mean, like, review it. Uh, we could have it. Uh, oops. And let's just say add an additional slide on the implementation plan elaborating on implementation please 
place. Right. And whether or not this is actual <laughs> actually just redundant from the the previous slide i mean like the you're you're the, the thing with copilot is there there's very much a uh an imagination factor when it when it comes to what you can actually do with this versus uh you know other other microsoft solutions right and and this is also where i like to stress that no two users are going to use copilot in the same way that i mean a lot of this is going to be dependent on your actual job uh you know your your role within the company and and what applications you spend working uh with on on your day to day i'll admit i myself uh because i i, I predominantly live within the the modern workplace uh kind of ecosystem i end up using the free version the the most uh simply just to to churn through the uh the the slew of microsoft learn uh data or, or or articles that um just to, just to answer all these odd questions that you know like Elliot and the rest of his team bring to me from the you know myriad of uh of situations that our, our partners end up finding themselves in right so if you're trying to get a uh, a good idea of how to prompt or how to interact with copilot I would definitely recommend using you know, experimenting with the, you know, the copilot for the web. Um, there is also a lab uh, that Microsoft has published um, that we can, we can send out to Melissa and, uh, you know, uh, uh, like just share with you all, but that's all, uh, you know, public for, uh, you know, that, that's just Microsoft's kind of like trial version, I guess you could call it. Um, just to, to get an idea of like how to prompt, how to interact with the different applications. Um, not to necessarily eat up through too much time here. Let's take a look at Outlook, right? Outlook is going to be very similar to Word, at least when it comes to drafting, right? So what we can do is uh, draft a friendly email to, I guess we'll just put me in here, Mr. About the following. And we can go through and let's just bring this back in here. Now you do have a couple parameters as to uh, one, like the 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 tone or the the length of the email, right? So if we wanted to make this just direct, uh, or 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 neutral, or casual, or foam, or formal, we, you can you can write poems to your colleagues if you want to weird them out in the middle of the day. Um, yeah, maybe we'll make this casual at a medium length, right? And again, it's it's drafted it's drafted in email on that. You do have the ability to go through and uh, you know 
make it shorter, longer. Uh, you know, if you wanted to make it more formal or more direct or more casual, or again, make it a poem, right? You can go and have it rewrite that draft for you. So, so, you know, with, within Outlook, it's going to behave very similar to, I mean, just drafting within Word or something like that. But that also doesn't, uh, you can also use it to, let me just start a new chat here, uh, as a sort of e-discovery tool. So you can say something like, catch me up on the last five emails I've received this week, please. Look at that, they're all from me. It's lonely in this tenant. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it's, it's. I mean, like the, the last five emails are all emails that I, I sent for myself about Copilot for Excel, Copilot for Teams, Copilot for Word, Copilot for PowerPoint, Copilot for Outlook, right? And it's it just catch me up on this, right? I don't necessarily need to go through and like check my inbox. I can, you know, I can just kind of ask Copilot to uh, catch me up or, right? and, and you can, you can drill into this a little bit more specifically. It's, you know, last, last five emails from, you know, XYZ user or with a specific tag or with uh, like a certain, you know, per pertaining to a certain subject, right? I, I, again, um, the, the, the key to your success here is going to lie within the uh, specificity of your prompt uh, and, and really just kind of your, your, your imagination. So Elliot, how, how are we looking on time here? If you have some more to show, Joe, we have some, some time. Sure. Sure. I mean, that's, that's more or less it, right? Uh, I mean, I, a lot of people, I mean, a, a lot of people want to take a look at Excel for right now. I will say that, uh, a lot of features in Excel are in preview, uh, at the moment. Right. Uh, but this is also um, kind of Microsoft's, at least pertaining to Copilot, this is uh, kind of Microsoft's like top priority, uh, just because there's there's a lot of ask for um, you know Copilot and Excel. So I mean, it right now, at, at least within like this specific app, um, Copilot really. Uh, does great at just like drawing analysis from uh you know from your tables one you will have to convert uh anything in excel into a data table in order for copilot to to read it right um but here we are looking at a a, a timesheet here right uh and i can ask uh what's the total amount of overtime worked oh, my Microsoft account needs to be verified. Oh, it didn't. It didn't seem to like that. Like I said, a lot of stuff in Excel is uh is still kind of in preview. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we can rephrase this. What's the total amount of overtime worked between August twentieth and August? 23rd table does not okay well that's not true um 
like I said, Excel's still in preview. Um, coming soon, though. Um, you know, I guess I I would say that the the actual functionality within uh you know with with, with you know with copilot within the actual application is going to be kind of case dependent within the specific application itself right i mean with uh i don't know if anybody here has used any of those like ai note takers uh before um in in teams um it essentially does the same thing uh but you can also you know have it like recap a meeting uh, you know, if you if you end up missing it or end up coming in late, right? It can have you generate meeting notes or follow up actions, uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, again, I would I would encourage some experimentation. That's what this uh, this lab is for. Uh, I can I can pull that up here. It's just uh, Copilot. Dot cloud dot Microsoft uh, dot en or slash en us prompts right this is this is uh, basically like a self-contained uh, copilot instance it's not actually connected to your tenant it's really just designed against helping you understand how the uh, how the you know how how the tool works within the actual application that you're working with um, so again uh, you know most mostly just experimentation um but i think at this point that just about covers everything i've got for you guys well thanks a lot joe really appreciate it um mm -hmm. just a couple quick last things to go over and then we'll we'll uh we'll answer some questions here at the end i know we've got a couple in the chat so far i've gotten to one i wanted to hold on to talk to you about the whole group so unless we don't mind sharing out the 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 screen just want to talk these last couple things and then we'll uh we'll uh we'll go over those questions Alrighty. Yeah. Thanks so much, Melissa. Yeah, um, go ahead. Let me get to where I need to be. Sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And if we continue to go on here again, really what we're, our goal is with Copilot, right? Is focus, focusing really what matters, right? Running your business, working with your customers, building your brand, scaling security securely, instead of going through searching for Outlook emails, uh, trying to create different presentations, getting started on different documentations on that side. So really, again, goal of Copilot, focus on more revenue generating activities, more important things to your organization besides doing those mundane and, and repeatable tasks. Um, and continue on again, just want to reiterate really that the AI uh, checklist, I think really the most important one of the AI checklist as we go into the next page is going to be on, um, you know, securing that organizational data, right? So if we took a look in there, I think there was a, a question on our side from, you know, how do we know, you know, if this data is good and it's not pushing us to a certain outcome? Um, you know, as we click here, it really is that this M365 Copilot 2 is pulling the data from your tenant. So, you know, if, if that data is, you know, shaded a certain way or, you know, giving you a certain, you know, outputs, um, it really comes to making sure that that is cleanly and able to go through and different and differentiate that stuff. And then the next half of that is we look onto the next slide is really how do we make sure we have a comprehensive solution that we're securing that data after we've secured its cleanliness to make sure we are getting those outputs we're looking for for and a lot of that comes through you know different comprehensive solutions on those zero trust foundations you know making sure that um you know we don't have those bad actors are coming in through that side really making sure we have the end endpoint management in place you know from intune or different solutions on that side to make sure that you know everyone has those consistent access controls across the organizations and then that's when we get into the the product being collaboration right once we have those first two foundations that's when you know we have all those different applications we're used to and then enabled like copilot can really make a difference um and then as we we go on this last slide just again to really you know reiterate and hammer things home here it is all, all about protecting your environment right all these different things that happen with this environment, you know, making sure that sensitive labels are there to restrict access to information that certain users shouldn't have, um, so retention labels, different policies for emails that are created by Copilot or different documentation there is, is certainly important. You know, everything that Copilot's able to do is inheriting those security solutions. So making sure that's in place can avoid a lot of kind of the pitfalls of either having data that's incorrect or data that, you know, we either don't want certain individuals to have and go through on that side. Um, again, the biggest things on those. And then we'll just leave you here with our final slide on Microsoft AI principles. Again, making sure that your data is your data, 
your data is not used to train any of the open AI foundation models without permissions on that side, um, because all of this data on N365 is going to stay within your tenant. Um, but, you know, I think um, if there's nothing else on your side, unless there's anything else you want to say, otherwise we can open this up for some questions here at the end. Yeah, I think Q&A would be good. Um, yeah. What other it, questions do we have, guys? Yeah, I know we had a great one from Frank that I think we can start with on those ones. And it's, it's really how can we assure the data is correct and we're not being steered in a certain direction for content? And I think with inside M365 uh, Copilot, that obviously comes a lot down to your data on those ones. Um, when it comes to web, I think there is there is that question, right? It's to verify those sources that you know it provides when it gives you an answer back that those are you know what you think are fair and balanced when those ones so there is some some work to be done on confirming those those different web questions but definitely inside your own tenant that comes down to more of your own data cleanliness your own data policies to make sure that those those answers are correct and that you're not being pushed in a certain direction by this tool that maybe you know it's incorrect on that side but what else do we have that we can answer for you And I will see that there, though, if there's a question, there's one other thing comment I'll make too. I think one of the things that's it's really tough, obviously, to show on the demos, but it's probably one of the most important things really is um, around teams. Um, you know, I think for myself, I find a lot of value that I'm invited to a lot of different meetings where maybe I'm not able to attend them, but by able to follow those meetings and get a full recap, um, both in a transcript as well as the recording onto when people, specific, specific people have spoken, um, I can easily go back get that information, make sure that I'm understanding correctly for those different meetings. So um, it's very difficult to demo just because we are on a Teams meeting as we're doing it, but you'll love to see after this a recap and different information on those recordings, just like you would see when you're utilizing te uh, Teams with Killpilot as well. Um, just to know that that's one one thing that I know is a lot of important to a lot of people that's just very tough to demo. So I just wanted to, to point that out. There's no other questions at the moment. Yeah, I know that that's... Uh... That, that that's something that I'd like to use. Um, <laughs> it really helps to have that recap there, and and uh, and sometimes even using it just to take notes um, for takeaways, um, just key items that to do items from the meeting. Um, so yeah, looks like we don't have any other questions here. I guess we should uh, wrap it up. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, thank you for having us join us, Melissa. Everyone else, thank you for your time. Joe, really appreciate you jumping on and walking us through some different portions of Microsoft Copilot. Yeah, um, a special thanks to to you both, Joe and Elliot from Pax8. We appreciate you sharing your expertise and guiding us through the demo. Um, your insights and practical examples are extremely helpful. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us and. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at future webinars and events. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye Take care, now. guys. Bye.